Welcome back to Empower In. My name is Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So one question that I have been getting a lot recently is what is pathophysiology and how do you study for pathophysiology? First, I think it's important to understand what the word pathophysiology means. So let's break it down. Before we do that though, guys, I want you to understand that none of this information is common sense. So don't ever feel like you're not super intelligent for not understanding it right away. It took me a long time to understand these concepts, and so just be patient with yourself and listen to it. Also, just for your information, I'm going to create an audio from this, so if you would like the audio to take me with you, then just look below in the description and you, you will be able to download the audio. So, breaking down the word. The first part of the word, or the prefix, is patho, which is Greek for suffering from or disease. Patho serves as a prefix to many words, for example, pathogen. Then we have the next part of the word, physio. Physio means the scientific study or function of a living organism. And lastly, we have ology, which simply means the study of. One thing that makes pathophysiology so difficult is that you, you first must understand normal functioning of the organ in order to understand the function when a disease is present. In order to properly care for your patient, you must know which disease process they are suffering from so that you can anticipate their needs and properly care for them. Etiology is a word that you will see a lot in this class, and it basically means the cause of or manner of causes. So what you're looking for in pathophysiology is basically what is the cause or causes, or another word is what is the pathogen. Some pathogens can be virus, bacteria, fungi, environmental, or multifactorial, meaning having many different factors. In class, pathophysiology will be broken down into systems. For example, cardiovascular disorders, neurologic disorders, endocrine disorders, and so on and so forth. Since there are many different diseases associated with each system, this class can be extremely challenging. So let's look at some normal functioning organs and then add some pathogens to them. And then we will learn a little bit about pathophysiology. In this first disease process, we will look at a disease called pneumonia. In a normal breathing process, the air enters into the body through the nose and mouth. Then the air travels down the pharynx, also known as the throat. Then it passes through the epiglottis, which is a flap of tissue that guards the trachea. The air then enters into the trachea, also known as the windpipe, and then reaches the bronchi. Remember, with two lungs, air is being dispersed into both lungs simultaneously. From the bronchi, it then passes through the bronchiolus, or small part of the bronchi. Then finally reaches the tiny air sacs called alveoli. The alveoli then takes oxygen from the air and extracts carbon dioxide from the blood. And there you have the normal breathing process. So now let's add a pathogen so that we can see how the disease process affects the normal functioning of the organ, also known as homeostasis. The most common cause of pneumonia in adults is a bacteria called Streptococcus pneumoniae. This pathogen can spread from person to person by inhaling droplets from an infected person who is coughing or sneezing. Once lung cells are exposed to the pathogen, an inflammatory response takes place, initially causing serous fluid to build up in the lungs, which causes the infection to spread. This will impact the normal breathing process. In pathophysiology, you will also learn about diagnostic treatments and medical management, which include chest x-rays, white blood cell count, blood culture, arterial blood gases, and if needed, bronchoscopy. Treatments include antimicrobial therapies, supplemental oxygen, and in severe cases, mechanical ventilation may be necessary. So let's look at another normal functioning system and then add a pathogen to it. Let's look at the appendix. With the appendix, the normal functioning is not 100% known, but it is thought to be a storehouse for good bacteria. However, when you add a pathogen, such as a virus, the inflammation and possible obstruction of the organ is fatal unless treated. Treatment includes an appendectomy and antibiotic treatment. Let's look at one more normal functioning system and then again add a pathogen. 
have the normal functioning and flow of red blood cells. The primary role of red blood cells is to carry oxygen from the lungs to the tissues around your body. They also assist carbon dioxide to be excreted through the lungs. Normal red blood cells flow easily throughout the entire body. If we start at the heart, the cells flow from the heart and then go to the lungs to pick up oxygen. From there, the arteries take the blood to all different locations in the body, such as the arms and legs, and so on and so forth. When a pathogen such as sickle cell anemia is present, the normal functioning of the red blood cells can be slowed down or even obstructed. What happens with patients with sickle cell trait is that they have defective hemoglobin molecules, causing red blood cells to become sickle-shaped. Such cells can impair circulation by clogging capillaries and causing obstruction in the blood flow. This also impairs circulation. Many times this happens in large joints causing extreme pain and swelling. Some other signs and symptoms of the disease can include tachycardia, cardiomegaly, chronic fatigue, and dyspnea. Treatments include IV fluids, blood transfusions, and an oral medication called hydroxyurea, which will reduce the number of painful crises. For tips on how to study pathophysiology, please visit the video that I posted called How to Succeed in Nursing School, which you can find right here, and I will also place a link below. When you start this class, the first question that you must ask your professor is what types of questions am I going to be exposed to? This is really important. Are they going to be true-false, word recognition, multiple choice, and will they be similar to the questions that we saw in anatomy and physiology? Or are they going to be scenario-based and clicks questions? If they are going to be scenario-based and clicks questions, you must study and clicks questions that are related to the subject matter. When I was in nursing school, I used Mosby's and Clucks RN. It was a very good book for me and I did very well in my classes and I also passed the NCLEX examination in 75 questions. So I do recommend their book and I will place a link to that book below in the description section. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. You can subscribe by clicking the button here. And if you did like this video and wanna see more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up and post a comment and let me know what other type of video you want to see next. Also, if you've already posted a comment with a video request, please just post it again because the more I see it, the more likely I am to create a video for it. Alright guys, I can't wait to see you guys soon. Love you. Bye.